The first up, let's talk markets. Ishwin Kadoria, the Associate Director and Fund Manager, PMS at Motilal Oswal AMC, joins in to talk about the market fundamentals. Uh, Sushmit, so morning. First, your thoughts on the sell-off that we're witnessing. It's been an exceedingly volatile ride for the market since the start of the year. Do you think from here it extends itself? Um, and what are the big worries for the markets? Good morning, uh, Rima, and thank you for having uh, me here. The, I think there is clearly uh, a tussle between interest rates going up and at what valuation to, does the market settle down. Uh, I think when interest rates were going down, uh, no valuation multiple was enough. And uh, it looks like now when interest rates are going back up, no multiple is uh, uh, low enough. So there is clearly a, a kind of a tug of war in the markets to find the right level. Uh, the way we think about it is uh, you know, historically we see the big rates that uh, approximately 20 times trailing earnings and uh, the estimate for a 523 earnings from Nifty is uh, about uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 900. So 18,000 uh, on the Nifty is, uh, a, I would say, a 70% uh, probability target over the next 12 months. So, you know, uh, obviously if the returns are uh, not as much, then uh, the markets will be more volatile. Uh, you know, if the returns will be made up 30-40% like it was last couple of years, then markets are less volatile uh, because you need to cover a lot of ground. So I think 10-15% uh, to 15 returns on market uh, should be the expectation for this year. Uh, but you know that the only caveat is uh, probably every equity investor uh, or commentator starts with that uh, number, and uh, we either get uh, we surely don't get fifteen, we get a lot of variation on that. Hi, Sushmit. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. This is Pavitra. You know, the question then is how do you approach this kind of market, right? I mean, uh, in this surprising interest rate scenario, you know the Fed is going to hike. We also did recently have the budget. Are there certain pockets which you think perhaps are still safe bets and certain pockets that you think you should absolutely avoid in this kind of situation? So the, uh, the one, uh, not sector, but a theme that we've been constantly uh, uh, warning uh, investors is long duration equity, uh, which is uh, equities or companies where profit uh, may is not present today but may come later, uh, or let's say profit growth may come later in case it already makes profits. So these are the companies that get severely impacted by interest rates. It's typical of it's. I mean the the best analogy is like a bond or a debt uh, instrument. Uh, when interest rates go up, the impact on a ten year bond is much more than a one-year bond. Similarly, when you do a DCF for a company, uh, if the uh, profit is going to come up to five, seven, eight, ten years, uh, then if interest rates go up in that modeling, then the value comes down disproportionately uh, versus uh, a company which is making profits uh, uh, this year itself. So I think one that is one, uh, uh, I would say, sector or uh, uh, theme that uh, should be careful about the long duration equities. Uh, the the uh, contrary to that, obviously, or the corollary to that is uh, buy companies which are uh, throwing up cash today. Uh, typically, when interest rates go up, it's, uh, it's actually also means that inflation is hot. Interest rates are nothing but a counter to that. And uh, hence, go back to the basics of investing in companies which have pricing power, which can pass on inflation. Uh, to its customers and still not get, and still not uh, impact the market. So uh, probably back to basics in the next uh, year or two for the markets uh, with respect to uh, uh, you know looking at cash flows, looking at pricing power with companies. Uh, financial services space looks very very interesting. I think both life insurance and general insurance have gone through probably the toughest period in the last five to three months. And uh, you know this is and, and the stocks uh, have got uh, severely impacted. And I think uh, this is the time to start buying these companies uh, uh, from a three to five year view. And obviously, banks, uh, every bank reads the result estimates uh, that you put out. Uh, SBI alone has the potential to do a 40, 50,000 post profit number, which is very, very huge considering uh, two years ago they were uh, making losses to the similar amount. Hi, Sushmit. Morning. Um, you know, when we see this uh, downturn starting in the market, contrary to all kinds of wisdom that's available, we do see uh, that retail wants to take 
money off, right? They want to move into cash because there is this trepidation about how much lower could things head. Uh, what are you telling clients about whether they should remain invested now? And for those who are looking to take profit, should they take it, uh, I mean, should they take money or rather should they redeem where they're making losses or should they take money off where there is some profit on the table? So, Mera, great question. I think you have to stick to asset allocation. If you have over-indexed uh, equities in your portfolio because the last year has been great, then uh, it's the uh, right time to correct it always today. Uh, so you should correct that. Uh, I think what this market also will tell you as an investor, as a retail or personal investor, is how much volatility can you handle, right? Uh, as we say, every person is a, a long-term investor uh, and the going is good and they all become uh, uh, short-term investors and the going is bad. So it's very, very important to now judge yourself, be honest to yourself. And if you can't take this volatility, uh, then uh, uh, right-size your equity allocation again. Uh, but if you believe that you've learned uh, this is how equity markets are, they only go up 51% of the times, 49% of the times they go down. And if you're okay with that, then uh, you should stick to your uh, uh, heightened equity allocation. I think this is part of the course. Uh, I would say the last 12 to 15 months, uh, maybe 20, uh, 20 and 2021, where the abnormal years, uh, 2022 looks more like the normal equity year that we uh, have come to uh, know. Mm. Uh, so, Shmit, a lot has been spoken about India's aspiration of being a $5 trillion economy. Um, we will get there. You know, it could be a little extended compared to the earlier timelines that uh, the government was perhaps looking at. But now, given the growth momentum, according to you and your own estimates, we could hit there at least in the next five years. Um, which would be the big portfolio long-term bets that you would take as we transition towards a $5 trillion e economy? Uh, thanks for the question, Bhima. I think, uh, you know, five trillion in five years is what uh, will happen to us. We spend the last three years uh, practically uh, with zero GDP, uh, dollar GDP growth. So, uh, all, it's, it's like a spring. When you compress the spring uh, for a long period of time, uh, the energy gets stored in that spring, and when you release it, it uh, jumps much higher than you would imagine. So, I think uh, the next five years, we should go from a three trillion dollar GDP to five trillion dollar GDP. Uh, we will only be the fourth country in the world to achieve it. So it's quite a big, uh, uh, I would say, a pat on the backs. The five themes that we think will play out uh, uh, are uh, what we call uh, industrialization, digitalization, urbanization, financialization, and formalization. Uh, these are the five themes that we think will be the back. Uh, the other uh, aspect that we've observed is typically sectors that do well then the country moves from 0.5 to 1 trillion is very different from 1 to 2.5 and hence uh, could be different from 2.5 to 5. Right? So, uh, you know, we see uh, Indian hotels saying that Goa uh, recovery is not in 30 percent and Hindustan we were coming and saying that uh, the volume growth is next to zero. So that shows you that, you know, our country probably has moved on from the sustenance economy uh, to the more uh, middle class uh, economy. So yeah, uh, these are the five themes. Uh, you will have industrialization starting from PLI as a mother scheme. Uh, you will have digitization not only from the tech world that we are seeing, but also enablers of tech, which is the Indian IT companies. Uh, you will have urbanization. Uh, I think the productivity issue of farmers can only be resolved by urbanization and for factories. Uh, uh, you will have financialization. I think uh, all of us uh, understand that uh, the, we've seen the marathons crossing eight crores. I think this is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and formalization. Uh, when I say formalization, it does not necessarily mean it becoming bigger, but I think more and more companies will come to the formal sector as the regulatory cholesterol is reduced. All right, Sushmit, so uh, we will leave it at that today. So, five trillion in five years, that is the word coming in. Thanks for taking us through all of the themes also that are likely to come to the fore at this time. With that, we get into our first short break in the show. You don't go anywhere on the other side. We turn our focus from equities to commodities and get you an update with Manisha Gupta.